It has only been the first two episodes, but X-Men 97 has successfully won over a majority of the fans by being a true reboot of the iconic 90s animated series. The narrative seems true to the comic books, and the eventful couple of episodes have set up the story perfectly so far. While there have been quite a few twists and turns in the narrative, one of the major shockers in the second episode comes when we see Storm losing her mutant powers. How and when will she get her powers back and will she regain her abilities at all? In this video, we will explore the event and also the possibilities that lie ahead for this Omega level mutant. But before we do that, we have a small request. If you enjoy our content, please give this video a massive thumbs up, share it with your friends, friends, and smash that subscribe button with the notification bell turned to all while you're at it. It helps us create the content that you love and bring in more marvelous viewers like you. Now, on to the video. Let us see how their mob manners fare against the shock of good conduct. How does Storm lose her powers in X-Men 97? From the very beginning, X-Men 97 has been very particular about Storm being extremely powerful. She is an invaluable member of the X-Men team, and in the initial face-off against the members of the mutant-hating Friends of Humanity group, we see just how effective she can be. In the second episode, the UN soldiers led by Dr. Cooper come to the X-Mansion to arrest Magneto for his previous crimes against humanity. Although this version of Magneto seems to have turned a new leaf following Professor Xavier's dying wish, he still has to answer for his actions before. When he is promised a fair trial, Magneto agrees to go along without causing any further trouble. But the real problems start showing up during the trial. The mutant-hating groups assemble outside the premises of the building where the trial is conducted, and in the middle of all this chaos, Executioner, a master assassin, plans to take out Magneto with one clear shot. He even has his laser-powered rifle ready, and since Magneto has the collar on him that takes away his mutant abilities temporarily, he is going to be vulnerable when faced with such an attack. The trial proceeds, and so does the commotion outside as Magneto tries to plead his case. Suddenly, the security is unable to contain the agitating crowd any longer, and these mutant-hating people are mad about why someone like Magneto is even getting a trial in the first place. They manage to break into the building through the security barricade, and it is chaos and confusion all around as the trial is interrupted. The X-Men present there for the trial, including the likes of Cyclops and Storm, spring into action immediately. However, even with all this going around, Executioner still has his target set. After Cyclops has to leave following a message from his pregnant wife, Jean Grey, that she has gone into labor, Skushner takes a shot at Magneto, and Storm tries her best to push him out of the way. However, she gets hit by the shot herself. We see her visibly injured, but it is soon discovered that the real damage is somewhere else. She has lost her mutant powers completely. <gasps> the breeze is gone. I cannot feel it. How did Storm lose her powers from a simple bullet wound? Well, the answer lies in the question itself, and it is further explained by Beast who examines the wound on Storm and the bullet that was used to shoot her. It is revealed by Beast that the laser rifle used on Storm did not use any normal bullet. Instead, it shot a concentrated dose of radiation at her, and it is the same technology that is used in the mutant collars to take away their powers temporarily. However, since the impact in this case has happened from a much more concentrated dose, Beast exclaims remorsefully that the effect of losing her powers can be permanent. Of course, it is still too early to deduce anything conclusive and Beast wants to research further on the matter, but the initial prognosis is enough for Storm to break down. She doesn't know who she really is without her powers, and even though she is comforted by Jean Grey and the X-Men around her, we realize by the end of the second episode that the event has taken a serious toll on her. She writes a letter for the X-Men and leaves the group for the time being, probably because she realizes that she is now going to be a burden on the team. Besides, now that she doesn't have mutant powers any longer, it might be logical to lead a different life on her own terms. Has something similar happened with Storm in the comic books? X-Men the Animated Series always tried to faithfully adapt the major comic book events, and from the looks of it, it seems like X-Men 97 is trying to do the same. Thus, we might find answers to what happens next hidden in the comic book events featuring Storm, where something similar happened to her once. There was an extended period of time during which Storm lost her weather-manipulating powers, 
and this phase lasted for as long as three years. This happened during the events of Uncanny X-Men Hash 185, and Storm aka Aurora lost her powers after a government agent named Henry Gyrick shot her with a special weapon. This weapon was designed to make sure that mutants lose their powers immediately, and it took a severe toll on Storm. Gyrick actually wanted to shoot Rogue, but Storm got in the way while trying to protect her teammate. It was later revealed that this wonder weapon was created by another mutant with a knack for invention, Forge. However, when he found out the after effects of his invention on Storm, he was determined to help her to get her powers back. In the story arc titled Life Death in Uncanny X-Men Hash 186, the weather-controlling mutant finally healed from her injuries. After how much Forge helped her in the process, Storm even fell in love with him, but the romance was short-lived after she found out that he was the same person who invented the weapon as well. However, she was still powerless, and she left the Xavier School in order to spend some time away from the X-Men. She continued to be a skilled fighter even without her superpowers, and although she couldn't summon lightning and storm any longer, she was still invaluable to the X-Men. She briefly got her powers back during a mission in Asgard, when Loki helped her in regaining her abilities. She was turned into the Goddess of Thunder, but Loki simply did this to spite his brother Thor. Eventually, Storm could see through Loki's intentions, and she rejected the power given to her. In a remarkable turn of events, Storm even went on to become a member of the X-Men in her powerless state, after she defeated Cyclops in a battle that was designed to determine the leader of the group. A new leader was necessary because Professor X was seriously injured and he had to go to Shi'ar in outer space in order to heal. She remained powerless for a considerable amount of time and even proved her credentials as a capable leader in the meantime, working effectively in several missions conducted by the X-Men even without her superpowers. Eventually, it was Forge once again who came up with something that restored her abilities. This, however, did not happen without a generous dose of drama, where Storm was almost convinced by the adversary that Forge had become evil. He almost led her to kill Forge, and the two of them were then banished by him to another dimension. During their time together, the two fell in love, and Forge finally invented the cure for Storm in Uncanny X-Men Hash 225. It is also important to note that even after getting her powers back, Storm ended up making the ultimate sacrifice, when she laid down her life in order to save the city of Dallas and the X-Men from the adversary. She was later resurrected by Goddess Roma, but her relationship with Forge never really took off after this point. Globe, reports are flooding in. Mutants and humans aided and saved by the former mutant terrorist who'd gone missing after failing to launch a mutant rebellion following Charles Xavier's assassination last year. And we're hearing the international community Will Storm get her powers back in X-Men 97? If you have watched the first two episodes of the series, you have understood by now that X-Men 97 has given this entire comic book storyline their own spin. Instead of Gearich who shot Storm in the comics, it is the executioner in the show, and instead of trying to save Rogue in the comics, she sacrifices herself while trying to save Magneto in the series. That being said, the overall theme underlines some major similarities. For instance, Professor Xavier is absent and the X-Men is in need for some solid leadership, just like the situation in the comics. Also, Storm has left the X-Men to be on her own, something she did in the comic book story arc as well. Now, it remains to be seen how she gets her powers back. We are focusing more on the how aspect because we are quite certain that going ahead in the show, we will see her with her weather controlling powers once again. She is too important a character to be left out so early, and we are expecting her to rejoin the X-Men even before she regains her superpowers, just like it happened in the comic books. How Storm can get her powers back. Will Forge be introduced in the show? Since X-Men 97 is taking the trouble of adapting so much from the original story, there is a good chance that they will introduce Forge as well. He can be the easiest way for Storm to get her powers back because he is known for his inventive skills. She can meet him during her time away from the X-Men and things might fall in place for her. Another major possibility is that Storm will be offered the cure by Beast who is somewhat of a scientist himself. We would, however, put our money on Forge to get the job done. Marvelous verdict. Getting her powers back is almost a certainty for Storm. The X-Men are only getting warmed up under the new leadership of Magneto, and a lot of challenges lie ahead of them. The Sentinel threat seems to loom large, and there are wider conspiracies in play from the groups like the Friends of Humanity. 
There has also been an indication that Jean Grey's clone Madeline Pryor will turn up as a major adversary for the X-Men. Given such major threats coming up, you can be sure the mutant superheroes wouldn't have to battle it out without Storm. She might join the team back even before she regains her powers, and we are eager to find out if she ends up fighting Cyclops for the leadership of the group and goes on to lead the X-Men as well. All in all, the story is set up perfectly, and we can't wait for the third episode to drop some of the answers. Do let us know in the comments below about your thoughts on the recently released X-Men 97 series and the crucial event of Storm losing her powers. Also, tell us whether you think she will get her powers back going ahead. Let us see how their mob manners fare against the shock of the conduct!